third type of solution calculation. This is called solution stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is going to be picket fence problems, so we're back to that. And uh, we've done a number of picket fence problems before. We've done problems that involve grams of material. We've done problems that involve uh, gases and using the ideal gas law to get moles. And uh, now what we're going to do a slightly different approach, is, uh, but similar. You're going to be given a volume and, uh, let's see, so like this. Um, you're going to be given a volume. It's going to be of, which means times, and you're going to have a molarity. And your volume times your molarity, or let's say this molarity is going to be your unit conversion factor. That will give you moles of some substance. Then you're going to use a mole to mole conversion factor. And the mole to mole conversion factor is the same thing we've been doing all along in this course, and meaning that you're going to need a balanced reaction and coefficients from the balanced reaction. Mole to mole conversion factor using coefficients from balanced reaction. Good, we can still see that. So this is not new. And then over here, now you're going to have an amount of some other substance. And now you're going to use molarity again to get back to volume of B. And this is specific to this problem. But we'll see that there's lots of ways to do this. And we will explore most, if not all, of them coming up. But this is our new kind of picket fence. It'll have one, two, three conversions. And let's show you how we do it. For this problem, it says what volume of 0.15 molar potassium chloride, right here, is required to completely react with 0.150 liters of times 0.175 molar lead to nitrate. So, and one of the things you'll hear me say uh, over and over during this next little portion is that uh, this is enough information, liters or volume, and molarity is enough information to find moles. And whenever you can find moles in this course, we always do it. So 0 0.150 liters, that's going to be our starting point for our given. Then I'm going to set up my picket fence. And I've got my molarity here. And I'm going to break my molarity down into moles per liter. That's one of the key things to the way that I do it. It says 0 0.175 moles. And I'm going to write the whole thing out per one liter of solution. So that's now my unit conversion factor. And you can see that my liters are going to cancel out. And that's this first part, this molarity. And then my next part is going to be the mole to mole conversion factor. And what that looks like is, since I have my moles of uh, lead to nitrate, and I'm being asked about, ah, one of my other reactants, that's totally fair game as we know. So it's going to be a mole to mole conversion factor between these two for every one mole of lead to nitrate. It reacts with two moles of potassium chloride. Like so. So we're so far we're right here. And units wise, we have now got units of moles of B, moles of potassium chloride as our final units so far. Next step is our other molarity. This time our molarity needs to have moles of potassium chloride on the bottom. So really this is going to be upside down molarity because we're always looking to make sure that our units cancel out. And upside down molarity looks like this, 0 0.150 moles 
of potassium chloride per one liter of solution. And that will cancel out our units and leave us with liters of oops, solution. There we go. And this is going to be liters of specifically our potassium chloride solution. So volume is going to be in liters. Let's go ahead and multiply this out. I've got 0 0.15 times 0 0.175 times 2 divided by 0 0.150 and I get 0 0.35 And you know me, always putting in my third sig fig there, 0 0.350, since all of these numbers with sig figs do have three sig figs. And that's the answer to this first solution stoichiometry problem. Let's do another one. And this one is going to be um, actually more of what's called a titration calculation, which we won't do too much, but... Uh, we can still handle it using the same method. We have 43.8 milliliters of 0 0.107 molarity HCl. So as soon as I see milliliters and molarity, I know I can get moles of HCl from that. And of means times, so they will be multiplied together. Just need to neutralize 37.6 milliliters of barium hydroxide. Solution, what is the molarity of the base? Okay, so this is a little different question, um, which is why we're doing it. And uh, let's see, so I need molarity of the base. And this is a new base for us. So looking for molarity of the base. But let's start off the problem in the same way that we did the last one and see how far we get. Because they can see that we have enough information to find moles of HCl. And I'm going to be do, doing something like it's somehow I have to get to this other compound, which means it must be a mole to mole conversion somewhere in there. And let's see how far we get otherwise. All right. So start with your volume of your HCl. And... Ah, this time we've been given it in milliliters, and molarity is moles per liter, so I'm going to have to put this in liters. So 43.8 milliliters is going to be 1,000 milliliters per liter, and that means divide by 1,000, or move the decimal place three places. 43.8 divided by 1,000. I get 0 0.0438, and that's going to be liters. Nice long picket fence as a setup. I have my molarity here. I will always break my molarity down into moles per liter. That's going to be moles of HCl per one liter of solution. And now I am doing something with this barium hydroxide, and I know I have a 2 to 1 mole ratio for this. Yep, 1 mole barium hydroxide. Um, and uh, this problem, because it, it says, what is the molarity of the... I guess if it was for you, I, you know, if you see it on the homework or on an exam, it would say, what is the molarity of the barium hydroxide? Wouldn't use the term base for us. All right. And so now if I look what I've got, I've got moles. And I want to put in my molarity here like I did in the last problem, but that's what we're looking for right now. So I'm just going to stop here. And I'm going to calculate my moles of barium hydroxide and see where I go. Because one of the things about these problems is sometimes we don't know exactly where we're going, but we have a limited set of tools and you only have one basic set of tools from the previous page. 
well, we, I guess we have a number of tools, but uh, so hopefully this is making some sense. Um, but let's get some moles here. And I have 0 0.0438 times 0 0.107 divided by two. And I don't like that, let's see, it. yeah. I like that for this number. So it's gonna be 0 0.00234. moles of barium hydroxide. And that's just for, so uh, I didn't have a molarity, so I couldn't do the same thing I did on the last problem. But now I have moles of barium hydroxide and I have milliliters or volume of barium hydroxide and I'm being asked about the molarity. So uh, go back to our molarity sort of setup calculation. Again, not knowing exactly how this is going to work out. So molarity is going to be moles over liters. And I do have my moles and I do have my liters, so I can find my molarity here. So this is, so we have this stoichiometry thing. That's one of our tools in our solution calculation toolbox. We have this sort of setup. And we have the dilution formula, but I don't see anything that says anything about dilution right here. So that's one of the ways we know not to use it. Let's go ahead and plug in our answers. We've got moles. And we've got... Well, we've got milliliters, so we're going to have to do the turn into liters thing again, and that's very common in this unit. So I'm going to move my decimal point three places to the left, and I get 0 0.0376 liters. And let's just show you that again. So 37.6, move it one, two, three places, and I get 0 0.0376 liters. And then, again, I know we're still figuring this out, but divide these two numbers to get your answer. And I always like to go back to my three sig figs, 0.234, oh, no, 0 0.00234, divided by 0 0.0376, 0 0.0622, molarity is going to be my answer for this problem. Let's do 